so um, uh, whoever was asking about the four-way test, I think that was Dan Sunquist. I, I did actually buy candy on Saturday for just in case one or two kids came by. And we actually did have one, one family stop by, but now I'm, now I'm uh, kind of having a reaction to Reese's peanut butter cups. I, I'm, <laughs> I have walked. I'm looking for creative ways to get rid of the 17 pounds of candy in my house. So. Well, the well, good news is that 17 pounds of candy can easily become 50 pounds of body fat. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> if, very, if you need very, help with those Reese's, Andy, if you need help getting person. rid of those Reese's so I'll see you with butter that. cups, let me know. I'll take them. Okay, you got <laughs> it. Yes. So, so Jay, this is Ron. Uh, you, did I get a sense that you're working oh, I wait for you folks so we can, um, you know, together. for one of their Who's that, club members? Thank you. Oh, sorry, Ron, I couldn't hear you. <laughs> okay, sorry. Uh, um, did I sense it right that you are a communication point with the Children's Museum to help get their new person, a new person, into our club? Yes, correct. Okay, because we had had contact from an interim woman who was going to take uh, Wendy's place. Is she still going to be the member or will it be someone else? Yes, no, it'll be Krishna Cabra. Okay. And so is she she's officially in the museum now? Oh, yes, she has. She's been there for okay. I'll, I'll contact you later and we can work together. You can be a sponsor for her and we'll get her formally signed up and get all that stuff. Okay. Yeah, that'll be great. I'm having lunch with her on Friday. So if we could do oh, it. Awesome. Before. Okay. Okay, cool. I'll contact you well before then. Thank you. Oh, thanks, Ron. Oh, let's see. <laughs> Alex are here. Welcome. Johnny Watson, welcome. Ken Myers. Hey. Hi guys. How's it going? Hello. Jake Gross. Oh, go ahead. What? I said hello, everyone. Hi, Ken. Hello, Ken. Hello, everyone, too. Uh, Hi, Watson. How are you? Muy bueno. Muy bueno. Is Roy working or just making believe? <laughs> <laughs> well, is there a difference? <laughs> oh, oh, oh. oh, that hurts. I, I'm an imagineer. I, I, I imagine I'm working all the time, too. Yep. Oh, one minute. One minute. Did you know that the Jeopardy song is exactly one minute long? <laughs> No. Well, there's, there's you must be the, the trivia champion. It, it's officially <laughs> noon now. It is uh, now officially noon, and I think someone is trying to get me to shut up. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let me do one thing here, and we will call the meeting to order. Let me do this. And before I forget, share computer sound. See, I always forget to do that part. All right, so we will start our first meeting of November 2020. We'll ring the bell and we'll ring the bell. Come on. <laughs> All right, Vaughn North, would you lead our pledge of a lead or no, our invocation? That's good. enough to do that. Yeah, invocation, Mr. North. Yeah, I can't get my video on I, for some oh, reason. Oh, man, you did, had it earlier. I know. Well, we there can, we leave, this, I got, I we can leave this beautiful picture of you. Well, well there you are. Okay. I'm, I'm good. <laughs> Let All me right. mute everybody, buddy, and then you unmute yourself, okay? Okay. All right. Unmute. Unmute yourself. Okay. And we uh, join in prayer on this special election day. Our Father in heaven, we are grateful to unite as Rotarians and friends 
And we're grateful for those who have made the sacrifice to maintain our communications and our services and activities. We ask you to bless them in their continued efforts to keep Rotary moving forward. Uh, we're especially grateful for this election day. And we pray that thy spirit will be over our land and our people to inspire us uh, to renew a spirit of patriotism and commitment for our ideals and to stir within us as a people, a spirit of cooperation and mutual respect. May we move past this time of contention that's been so intense and sincerely establish a new spirit of camaraderie and good associations. We ask for thy blessing upon this meeting and do it in the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Thank you, Vaughn. And then Miss Jan will be doing our pledge, pledge, pledge of allegiance. Yep. There we go. Okay, if you will say with me, ready, begin. I pledge, pledge allegiance, allegiance to, to the, the flag, flag of the United, United States, States of America, America and to the to Republic, Republic for which it stands, stands one nation under God, God indivisible, indivisible. With, with liberty, liberty and, justice and justice for all. For all. <clears throat> Outstanding. You know, I have to say we've gotten better. We almost were in sync on that. I think we're getting used to this lag thing. Next thing you know, we'll be singing the Howdy song together. Uh, see? <laughs> all right. Our patriotic song for the day. Very appropriate. The Star Spangled Banner. Oh. Welcome to our, our November 3rd meeting. 
We have at least one guest, Mr. Chris Megason is our uh, program today. Say hello, Mr. Chris. Hello, Mr. Chris. <laughs> Do we have any other guests today? Any visiting Rotarians? All right. Well, then, Chris, this song is for you. Howdy, we're glad to have you here. Welcome, we sing a lot of clear. Relax, enjoy the program. And when you come back, you see us again. Ah, see, you sound great every time. You must practice that song a lot. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Our, uh, not not one missed note. It sounds exactly the same every single time. Um, November 10th, next week, we have our board meeting. We also have Christine Montan discussing the Rotary Foundation along with Colleen McKinnon, telling us a little bit about uh, who they are, what they do, and how they're doing it. On the 17th, Susan Day will talk to us from the Byrne Institute of San Diego. Uh, the 18th is a Haven House. Uh, talk to Kelly Cloud, who had to be in here if you'd like to volunteer. 24th, Ron Parker will give us a wonderful program on the Wounded Warrior Fishing Trips. On December 1st, we have Women's First Step House. Tony Ingle will be telling us about that. The second, another Haven House on the 8th Art Censorship with Robin Douglas, who I'm sure most of you remember. She has amazing programs. And just, just announced today, just decided upon today, 15th of December, we are going to have an in-person, socially distant holiday meeting and demotion for Jan. We will be at the Center for the Arts on the 15th. Um, tickets will be, as soon as we for, uh, get the uh, contract signed with the Center, um, tickets will be $20 per person. And we have a hard limit of 60 people. So plan now. Um, I'm, I, and if you don't see the email with the ticket link with by the end of this week, email me. Um, beautiful. Let's see how we're doing on time. We're doing well. Any member moments? Okay, not hearing any member moments. We now have Miss Christine to talk to us about boots. Well, this must be feet. Where in the wilds? Who wants to make a, a guess at who this might be and what happened? Pauline. Colleen knows what happened? No, Pauline. If, if it's an old one, she fell down and broke her ankle. Yeah, this is Dan Sunquist, isn't it? It is. It is Dan Sunquist. What happened, Dan? I was on a little hike and uh, injured a tendon. That's the short version. Good version. He, he was on the he was on the roof chasing a bird. Oh. And, oh no. <laughs> he decided to put his foot down his wife. Ah, <laughs> that's maybe a more likely story. Well we're wishing you know good wishes for your fast healing Dan. Thank you everyone. Get it healing get it Get it? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> this is In the Wild Halloween edition. And look at how cute little Athena is dressed as a bee with oh, sorry. Uh, past president Jan. That's all right. I was just going to say that. And Ozzy as a chef and wife Julia as dancer. Beautiful. This is Greg Anglia, and he actually had 40 years old and interface annual Halloween costume contest. So he's going with the 80s. A nice oh. look, I'd say. I thought he was Carol Baskin. Oh, <laughs> that's cute too. And here's Krista sure. Malakas, his wife, Natalie, and their baby, George. And Rosa and a friend at a Halloween party. Ah, and Bate 
evidently they have in their neighborhood someone that puts on um, a, a theater production. And this time this year was Willy Wonka in the Chocolate Factory. So how cool is that? Very cool. I think so. And then we have Kelly Cloud as Tigger with, uh, I think that's Jack Skellington. So yeah. good to see Kelly too. Yay. Yay. All right. Thank you very much, Christine. It's nice to turn that over. It really is. <laughs> you, you have enough on your plate, Andrew. Jade and I are happy to help. Thank you. Marilyn, would you like to talk about our birthday kids? I would love to. But first, I want to give you a, just a little fact about November. On today, on this date in 1913, the USA introduced a permanent income tax. Doesn't that make all of us happy? <laughs> <laughs> all right. On the fourth, Erica is having a birthday. Mark Burroughs on the 12th. And Bob Schuster on the 12th. And Bruce Dunn on the 14th. Lisa Peterson on the 17th and our own Dollar Bill Smith on the 19th, and Dan Hopalong <laughs> on the 22nd, and Johnny Watson on the 28th, and Trudy Bronner on the 29th. Let's sing a nice happy birthday to all the November celebrators. <laughs> Who's gonna lead it? Um, well, I will start. <laughs> <laughs> Happy, Happy birthday, birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Indians. Happy birthday to you. And many more. Very nice. Thank you, Marilyn. And happy birthday to you all, especially the first one coming up tomorrow, because that's the one I'll remember to wish you a happy birthday, Erica. Everyone else I may forget by the time your birthday comes around. All right. Some reminders. Uh, Larry Trotner is having a trash pickup this weekend. I hear that if it's raining, the trash pickup may just be around his house instead of out at the 78. Is that true, Larry? Well, I'll, I'll let everybody know. We'll watch the weather, but we're planning on having it. Okay. Perfect. And Christine, again. I do. Um, at the same time, some of us are going to be, uh, um, at the same time, Larry and a troop are going to be out at the freeway picking up trash. We have an opportunity to join the District 5340 Foundation Seminar. Um, in the past, there's been a little handful of us that have driven out to Joan Croc Center for, the, um, for Peace. This time, there is no cost. It is free. They've limited it to two hours. And it's a Zoom meeting on this Saturday, November the 7th. So um, they're going to be doing a presentation on district and global grants so that we can see what clubs um, are doing in terms of international projects and also the major donor awards and club awards. So I encourage you to do it, especially if you haven't been to one. Um, it'd be nice to have Escondido well represented and it's a good way to learn a little more about the Rotary Foundation. Please do uh, give if you have any questions about it, do contact Christine. I'm unfortunately not going to be able to attend it this year because I'm going to see my mother this weekend. So I will be out of town. Not that anyone cares. I just, I need someone to re represent me. That's interesting, Andy, because I'm going to visit my mother tomorrow. Are you? Is she living in Colorado too? I'm sorry? Does she live in Colorado too? No, she's in Seattle. I leave tomorrow. Oh, okay. Thank All right. You. All right. Now I get to mute everybody again, except for uh, Vaughn North. And we're going to have our fun song. That's that's Vaughn preparing for the 
for the singing. And there you are. Are you ready, Vaughn? I'm going to mute everybody except, well, you're going to have to unmute yourself. So here we go. So I do need to make a comment about Chris Megason to understand this song. I've finally stepped into the mode of doing Home on the Range, but we're going to have to call it Homeless on the Range, since that's his topic. You'll hear Solutions for Change. That's his company that's doing this great work. And then the only th thing you won't understand is when we talk about working on the farm, he's going to explain that, I hope, today. But one of his big steps is putting people to work on a farm. And then he's got this motto that's get up, suit up, and show up. With all that explanation, here is a new version of Home on the Range. If you're on the roam and you're seeking a home, there's a man who is solving your plight. In Solutions for Change, there is hope on your reins with Megason leading the fight. Homeless persons can hope, and Chris has expanded their scope. He's building a dream with a wonderful team that lifts them with new ways to cope. When people are down, there is help in this town. This Marine knows the way to success. His methods are clear with a few words of cheer. Get up, suit up, and show up. Now the homeless can hope, and Chris is now helping them cope. They'll work on a farm and develop some charm and discover a new way of scope. Very good. That was nice. Jay has been replaced. Never. We'll never replace Jay. We need somebody to beat up on. <laughs> All right. So I believe it is uh, Dr. Moyer introducing Chris. Is that accurate? That's correct. All Thank right. you, President Nandy, fellow Rotarians. It gives me great pleasure to wish uh, and welcome Chris Megas into our meeting today. Uh, in 1993, Chris launched his involvement in community service when he began designing and leading numerous free market social purpose initiatives and innovations designed to end homelessness permanently. Uh, they've graduated over 4,500 people to date. Chris believes in leading from the front a style he learned while serving in the U.S. Marines. Juan already uh, mentioned his motto, get up, suit up, and show up. Um, you'll hear today about the many aspects of the Solutions for Change program. The Solutions Academy, which is the only full service leadership development residential uh, program for homelessness in the country. The Solutions Enterprise, which is their economic development, which offers both business experience and involvement for their clients, but also generates revenue to help support the programs. And then finally, Solutions in the Community, underscoring their deep involvement in all the North County communities. So join me in welcoming Chris to our midst. Nice. Thank you, Doug. Whoop. And Wait, Vaughn, that was amazing. I mean, uh, I, yeah, Vaughn. I think you, Vaughn, yeah, Vaughn, that was, that was really, that was great. I got to get a, uh, you know, you could package that and, you know, I, I'd buy it from you. So <laughs> uh, I want to share my screen. Um, oh, there we go. All right. You guys are on it. Uh, let us um, do this here. Second. And while you're doing that, thank you for voting today. Nice sticker. We like that. Absolutely. I uh, 
I have a feeling that there are many folks in this room who, who have done the same. Um, so can you see all that? Can you see that, that first screen there? It says Solutions yes. for Change. Great. Well, this has been a group that I've, uh, I've been um, welcomed into many times over, gosh, I, it's, it has to have been at least 15 years, if not uh, longer. And uh, one of the things that wasn't on there that, uh, um, uh, that I think most of you know, I'm a Rotarian, been a Rotarian with Vista Rotary for 25 years. Um, you know, we just merged. I was with the Shadow Ridge Club. We just merged with the Vista Club. So, and we're all figuring out the Zoom thing too. We're starting to get pretty good at it. But we do not have a person uh, like Vaughn that can that can um, just crank out those amazing songs. So, uh, appreciate being here. Thanks for having me. You know, I, I've been at this for almost three decades. It was uh, when I got out of the Marine Corps right after the first Gulf War. And in 92, I started doing this work. And so I want to, you know, just kind of keep things light. Today's kind of a serious day, I think. Uh, you know, we're going through a national election that many describe as, um, you know, we've been hearing about it and hearing about it and hearing about it for quite some time. Uh, it's, it's, uh, it's been quite the serious topic. So just in the spirit of maybe making things a little bit lighter, I wanted to I'll give you a brief on the on all the things that we have done and why we have done them, and then want to bring you into a into some something big that Solutions for Change just initiated here. I uh, kind of it, it came it was it was started last year when we had some folks from D.C. come down and they selected us uh, from a handful of nonprofit organizations nationwide to lead a demonstration initiative right here. And that happened uh, in November of last year. And then we were getting ready to launch it in, uh, in March. And then this little thing called the global pandemic hit us. We didn't know we were gonna be able to do it or not, but we just were able to uh, pull enough things together to make that happen. So I wanna, I'm gonna kind of end on that. Hopefully have some time for questions. Um, you know, but shortly after uh, I got out of the Marine Corps, I met this guy um, and his name was, um, hold on a second here. Let's see if I can switch this. Uh, why isn't this working here? There we go. I met this guy uh, who taught me a lot about homelessness. Um, probably everything I needed to know at that point in time, I learned from this one gentleman. And then nine years later, I met another person. And really from these two individuals, everything that I've learned over uh, or everything that I know over three decades, it really comes down to what I've learned from these, these two folks. So the first guy was Wolfman, that's his nickname. And I met Steve, I met Wolfman after losing a push-up bet in the Marine Corps. Uh, the loser had to go serve in a soup kitchen line. Some of you are, maybe have already heard this story, so I'll be brief, but uh, the volunteer next to me, I'm laid on a bowl of soup. He says, look out, man, here comes Wolfman. And I look up and there's this guy, uh, pretty scary looking guy. Um, I couldn't find a picture of Wolfman. So this is not a scary looking guy, but he had a lot of hair all over his face. And so I put him in there, but Steve uh, was the most prominent, if you will, the most visible homeless person in the whole region there. And this was, um, I was serving in a soup kitchen in Vista uh, in the early nineties when I met him. And I sat down and I, and I you know, said, Hey, I'm not afraid of Wolfman. I want to find out more about this guy's story. And so over the next like 40 minutes, Steve described this system, if you will, of in and out of services and getting a bunch of stuff. Um, and he was an alcoholic uh, and he had, a, he had a fascinating story of, um, of uh, growing up in Vista um, and then losing his mom and his dad in a very tragic situation. And then, um, falling kind of into a depression, jumping into a bottle. And the more I listened to this guy's story, the more upset I felt myself getting because nobody was, um, after 18 years on the street, this guy was dying. He was not looking good. He was dying in front of everybody. So I had to go out and, and I saw for myself uh, what he was describing to me. And what I saw was 
what I later called the churn. So there is this army of nonprofits and really well-meaning folks out there that were trying to help guys like Steve, but they weren't addressing the root causes. They were just giving out a bunch of stuff. And they were really looking at Steve as like a victim or like a cannot or um, somebody that just um, had to be managed. And, uh, and so I, that was my first glimpse at the churn that was almost three decades ago. And it, um, it bothered me so much that I ended up getting out of the Marine Corps and going to work in this field. Um, I felt I'm a faith guy and I felt like God just grabbed me by the shirt collar and told me that uh, it was time to go do something else. And I'm in the Marine Corps. Um, I did, I also found out I had entrepreneurial tendencies, but in the core, um, they don't really like entrepreneurs. They're like, see that hill, march up and down it 10 times, get it out of your system um, and uh, do what you're told kind of thing. So when I got out, I immediately started thinking about how I could help more guys like Steve. And we started doing that at Green Oak Ranch. Uh, we, for about seven years, we helped a lot of homeless street men. And the way we did it was different. We didn't do the typical shelter thing. Um, and, the, and the food thing, although everybody got shelter, everybody got food. I, I started to understand this thing called social enterprise. And so I partnered with the Times Advocate. Most, some of you remember them from years ago when there was newspapers around and the Blade Citizen. And, and we launched the newspaper Hawker program. And from that, what I learned was, is that these, a lot of these guys who look like they couldn't get out of homelessness, if given a chance and we invested in them. So instead of looking at them as victims, we were looking at them as victors. Instead of enabling them with handouts, we were investing in them. We were empowering them. And instead of getting dependency um, and really kind of this helplessness thing, they were being empowered and they were getting out and getting jobs. So we did that for a number of years. And then I ran into the other, the second person that has taught me everything. And this is a beautiful homeless girl, nine years old, at a winter shelter designed for these street men. And we started seeing a lot of these families come in. And one night, you know, she looks up at me. She thought I was living in the shelter with, because um, my wife was there and I had a, my both of my boys there helping me out, volunteering. And, and, uh, and so she yanked on my sleeve and in the most beautiful, innocent voice asked me if I lived on the winter shelter floor with her and her mom and her baby sister and the way she said it, you know, it's just like, you know, hey, mister, do you live here too? And I'm like, you gotta be kidding me, man. I live in one of the, the most amazing places in the world to live. And this beautiful nine-year-old girl is asking me if I live on the floor of an emergency winter shelter, what in the heck is going on here? I get down on one knee, I tell her I didn't live there, but I made her a promise. I told her I would get her out of there. And she teared up. I'd be lying to you if I told you this old Marine didn't tear up. And we gave each other a hug. And in that second, Jessica launched a movement called Solutions for Change. Um, we were working with another nonprofit at that point. We left that nonprofit and started Solutions for Change kind of on a wing and a prayer with the idea that we had to get these kids out of this horrible situation. And what we saw was the same exact thing, except for it was just a little different in terms of you know, the, the circles there. This was a, what we learned was, is that Jessica's uh, mom, uh, her mom was in a, a deep poverty scenario. And we started seeing a lot of families struggling. And so we had this idea of generational poverty, but there was still a lot of these handouts and the handouts, instead of getting people out and lifting them up, they were, there was this dependency cycle that was created. And so for the same kind of ways that I saw with Steve, now I was seeing with families and it's like, there's no way that we can like abandon our kids this way. We've got to do something different. And when we looked at the system, it was a kind of a hodgepodge of different, you know, go here and do this. And then if you're this way, you go to this place, but if you're that way, you go to this place. And there was just this whole system of, moves and other moves and go here and go there and we're like oh my goodness you know this is this system is woefully inadequate to really help this these families solve the causative factors now i want to 
the, you know, solving root causes is what I've been at for the entire three decades. And what we learned back with Steve and the homeless men, we then started applying and we essentially had to build our own system, if you will. We start, we did that with three different social enterprises. So Solutions for Change is made up of three different social enterprises. And the definition of a social enterprise is doing something purposeful and good for people, planet, or purpose, uh, and doing it in a way that generates revenue from the market. So what I quickly realized was, is that, you know, the government was the 800 million pound gorilla in terms of funding, but they weren't necessarily investing in the kind of, in the kind of life-changing opportunities that solutions felt it was needed for these families. So we developed this personal development academy. It's, um, it, it has morphed over the years. It's now called Solutions Academy. It is a 700 day complete transformation from soup to nuts. And I'll talk a little bit about it here in a minute. We also developed a world-class aquaponics farming operation and we use that for our workforce training. So back in the day, I was using the Hawker program partnered up with these private corporations, the, the newspapers um, that would generate the funds and then that would underwrite the human beings going through our programs. Well, now it's this, it's this farm, but it's a workforce training. And then this community, uh, this real estate and community development. So essentially building real estate throughout the region, but also putting our people back in the community in service to others. So those are the three social enterprises. And I want you to think about this for a second. How many times have you heard this phrase? Well, homelessness is really complex. Well, homelessness is a really, you know, multi kind of uh, layered issue. Homelessness is really tough. You know, it is, there's lots of different parts to it, but what we figured out is by taking one piece of that toughness, for example, the, what goes on between the two ear, ears here, what's going on here in our, in our heads, in our hearts, you know, what's going on in terms of how we react. And a lot of it comes down to um, a lot of significant emotional stuff that we noticed over the years where people coming to us with this trauma and lots of different ways of not coping very well. And when people don't cope very well with feelings, a lot of them go to escape. And we started seeing a lot of escapism. And this escapism is, was a way to deal with all this gunk down here. Now, just to qualify this, I, I was, um, you know, when I was in the Marine Corps, I was going to school at night for behavioral science at National University. And I became one of the Marine Corps' first certified substance abuse counselors. I came, became really interested in, the, in, the, in that specific vocation of being a substance abuse counselor. And folks, I, you know, I don't share this very often, but lately I've been sharing more of it because it's really not about me. But I got into that work because I lost two very loved family members to addiction. So at the root of why I'm doing this is, and I didn't even understand it at first myself, but that the root of it is so many of these homeless folks are in mental anguish from addiction, mental health issues, from this poverty stuff, from a lot of really tough stuff. And so at the very core of why I'm doing this is, is I went, you know, like a knucklehead that I am, I didn't go to, you know, the middle of the rung, people suffering from addiction. I went right to the very bottom of that rung, people that have lost everything, that were homeless and going to almost lose their life. And I said, and that's where I staked the flag right there. And that's what we've been doing. So quickly, because I know I'd, I, I'm going to run short on time here. The Personal Development Academy, it's on um, two acres in Vista. We got it. It was funded by the entire region. Six cities in the county pitched in to help build it. And uh, right now we've got about 120 moms and dads uh, going through that program. Uh, we've established a few other real estate assets around this so that it's, it's uh, larger now. So in just right in the place around it. So there's about 200 once homeless moms and dads going through the program. And the academy, so think of it like this. Um, you know, homelessness is, is a tough thing. 
but get up, suit up, show up. So getting up, getting the kids fed off to school, of course, now with COVID, it's been really tough, but taking care of the kids and then applying yourself in classroom work. Um, and so we've developed a curriculum over two decades that literally helps people identify and get to the root causative factors. Some of it's therapeutic, some of it's very cognitive oriented stuff. Um, a lot of it is based on a community empowerment model. So these are people, it's a social model, people working together to, to be there for each other, learning how to, how to support each other in a way that's loving and caring and empowering. Um, and so there's a lot to it, but this curriculum is, that's how we got found out by the feds. The feds found us and like I said, we're one of five nationally where they said, this is amazing curriculum. They saw our results were three times better at one third the cost of the government, a lot of the government programs. This is the academy in a nutshell, the farm. There's a picture of my farm. Um, it's aquaponics. It is a entirely different form of farming. People get up, suit up, show up. The moms and dads work the farm in the beginning parts of the program. And they grow this amazing food. Our families eat the food. It's the best food you can put in your body. It's all certified organic. And um, it, we're selling the food. We sold it to a lot of the school districts. Then we, we pivoted, started selling it to a lot of restaurants. COVID hit. We had to pivot again. And now we're doing a CSA, Community Supported Agriculture. We put it in a box. We partnered up with other farms. And we're delivering the boxes of food directly to folks in, in the region. Um, our real estate development and community development. This is us in front of our Escondido place that, um, that we built a few years ago. It's been open now for a couple of years. Uh, it's called uh, Solutions Escondido. Um, this has been, uh, this was a big dream for solutions. We you can't solve it without the housing. So we got to build housing, but not just any housing. This has got to be housing that is drug free. And some of you have heard there's been a massive movement over the last five years to transform the way the government sees and acts on homelessness. And I want to cover this really quick. So it's California's top down one size fits all system. And those of you know that I have a hard time shutting up sometimes. I am really upset about the system. And I've just been at it, at it, at it. You've read the paper just the other day. You saw we just solutions took a major hit as a result of the system because we will not convert our housing to drug allowed housing. These are people that come to us, they have these serious issues, they want to live in drug free housing, and they're all families. And there's 600 of them 600 moms and dads. So 200 at our main campus and then another 400 at these housing places. Well, after two years of fighting this California one size fits all, we had to sever all the housing after 12 years of developing and building all this great housing for these families because we could not overcome the demands by the state saying that we had to allow people to use heroin and meth at these places. It's the new system where you allow people to do this and then think they're gonna change. So here's on the, on the left, is the cannot. These are the truly, truly folks that are severely mentally ill. They cannot. So they have serious mental health conditions that have been diagnosed. That's about 15%. And the middle is the will not. Those are folks that largely have addiction issues. Uh, they can also have other issues too, gambling issues, relationship stuff, lots of trauma in this one. And then the 10% are the have nots. Well, here's what California did. They said one size, which is called housing first, which is just put them behind the door, no conditions, no requirements. And okay, for the 15%, you know, you kind of get that. But they said, no, we're going to do it for this percent too. We're going to do it for the will nots as well too. And they said, wait a minute, we're also going to do it for these guys too. So this one size fits all system that's been pushed down from the state California is the first state in the country that made housing first law. So it came from HUD, but California said, you know, we like this so much, we're gonna do it, we're gonna mandate it for everyone. Well, Solutions gave up 
millions of dollars in 2016 to now because we wouldn't do it. We gave up our programmatic funds. We thought we were good to go. And just recently in the last like 18 months, they wanted our housing that we built seven years ago that's been sober housing for all these families. They forced us to either convert and do it their way or sever it from our mission and give it up. So we had to sever it because we're not gonna run drug housing. So instead of the have nots, they need empowerment based housing. And so do the will nots, they need empowerment based housing. And that's what we do. We do empowerment, we don't do handouts. The whole entire system that we've developed is around empowerment. And it kind of looks like this. And now with the folks from DC, we're actually doing this systems change effort. So everybody that comes into solutions comes in in the bottom left window, dependent, highly dependent and very, very negative health and well being. My job for you and for them, because you're my customer, they're my customer, you, the public, are my customer. I don't work for the government. I don't work for people that tell me to do it their way. I work for you and I work for them, is to get them from bottom left to top right. And we can now do that in 700 days. So they go from highly dependent and very negative well being and health to now healthy, good well being and no longer dependent. And we've shown this and proved it. And it has been vetted by the guy that runs welfare for the whole country. His name's Clarence Carter. If you wanna check it out, Google Clarence Carter and Solutions for Change. There's been quite a few articles on us. And he, he has said, he discovered that this model of empowerment versus enabling is exactly what we need to do more of. And so with that then, we launched this new vision and purpose here. And we did it with 21 of our graduates that we call overcomers. So our whole shtick now is make overcomers crush the churn. These overcomers were the, in the deepest depths. I mean, we, they lifted themselves out through solutions and, and they were in horrible conditions and now are thriving and they are at the tip of the spear. So we're pulling people out of the churn. We bring them over, we get them bottom left to top right. And we do that through this, this ground up community based and market driven model. Folks, within a hundred miles of where you sit right now, there's one fifth of the nation's homeless population counted by the federal government system, one fifth. So that's about 100,000 souls that are locked into this thing called the churn. So we've launched this thing and we're calling it We Are One Us. Because when the least of us become the best of us, which is exactly what we do, we, we, we convert and transform the very least of us into the best of us, these overcomers are incredible. And I'm going to close with this one thing that happened. About four months ago, we're eating at our restaurant after they could reopen with four tables outside and everybody from solutions kind of go that's kind of our spot and one of our chief overcomers graduates goes up and talks to the owner and she starts crying because she ain't going to make it so jennifer goes back and mobilizes 10 overcomers one of them is a master deck builder and in seven days they built a 1000 square foot deck in the parking lot, it was sloped, so they couldn't put the tables in the parking lot. And they, we got the city to approve it and everything. You know, that's not easy to do sometimes. And uh, we built that for that restaurant, no cost to them. We nailed it. And we did it for two other restaurants, same thing. So the overcomers did it. So again, the least of us become the best of us. There's one us. And so we're excited about this new initiative. The goal of it is to, is to be evaluated by an outside evaluation system that will come in and get us evidence-based so that we can then share it with other parts of California and frankly, you know, the entire country, we hope. So that's uh, my report to you. Um, this is one of the families that overcame. That's Ron and Amanda. That sweet, that kid right there, man. This guy's got the biggest glasses, man. He's the sweetest kid. And, uh, and, uh, 
you know, his name's Teddy. He's just, a, he's, he's an amazing kid. And so um, that's one of the now over 1,500 families, about 2,500 kids that have completely transformed their lives. So that's um, my presentation. I, I don't know if I went over. I probably did. I apologize. Nope, you did but, fine. Uh, you did fine. Good. Well, that, that might be a first. So. <laughs> <laughs> In fact, we so, even have about uh, 10 minutes for questions if, uh, if y'all would like. Yeah, well, I'd I love have, to. Know. I have, yeah. um, actually, Jan I have a comment. Chris, what you're doing is phenomenal. I really congratulate you and everyone, your whole team, and most mm -hmm. especially the people who work so hard to overcome. And I wanted to just let you know, you may or may not be familiar, but there's an organization that was started in Nashville called uh, Thistle Farms. And it was a person, do you know them? Do you know of yes. them? Because yes. you all are very similar and you should be connecting it in order to improve and increase your impact. Her impact was on uh, women who were stuck in prostitution. And, yes. and it's amazing what she has done and it's amazing what you are doing. And I just thought if you all um, became uh, kind of helped potentiate each other's successes. So. Yeah, so what you just described is a big part of the system change initiative. So out of the five organizations nationally, I was the dummy that stuck my hand up last year and said, I'll go first. Um, but it's they have also been interviewed and they weren't one of the original five, but I believe now that they will be. They, they um, we've actually spoke to them and um, so this is going to be a network of organizations awesome. like them and, and us that will all work together, various different parts uh, around the country. So, yeah. you know, we're the first ones trying this. There's a, there's a lot to be done, but, um, and frankly, with COVID, we didn't think we could, you know, we weren't sure we could even pull it off, but our people are amazing. They're like, no, nope, we're needed more now than ever. Let's go. So um, thank you for for knowing about Thistle Farms. We think they're really cool. Yes, they're great. And so are you. So thank you for what you're doing. Thank you. Thank you Absolutely. very much, yes. I have a question for you, Chris, Vaughn North. Vaughn North. Uh, the government is uh, obviously watching you. Do you project their willingness to line up behind your rationale for this? And uh, how's changing their paradigm? Yeah, that's the exciting thing. I have never seen the folks that I've met at that level. So Clarence, when I listened to him, I couldn't believe I was listening to somebody that really got it from the ground level, the, you know, where we live. And the vision that he was describing is incredible, incredibly aligned. So, uh, so for three and a half years, you know, uh, I, I was invited in to serve uh, as an advisor to him and others. And, um, uh, you know, it's like I said, I, I won't, I, I'm not going to get political, but I, I couldn't believe some of the opportunities that they were finally just listening. I don't care what side of the aisle you're on. I don't care. To me, it's all about solving root causes. And, and, and if we're doing that, then that's great. If we're not doing it and we're just slapping you know, million dollar band-aids on stuff, then that's not good. So the fact that that I'm now seeing, Vaughn, to answer your question is, is yes. I mean, we are seeing a real shift and I'm seeing it for the first time really um, in, in my three decades. I've never seen the commitment to that level and um, it, it's pretty exciting. And, and in fact, that, that the system that came out, you know, years ago, um, I mean, look, if Housing First could work, you know, it's been around now for quite a long time. I'd be the first one up there, but it promotes dependency. And honestly, it really does. For, now, maybe it doesn't for some, but for the families that I serve, it's, it does. And, and I hear it time and time and time again by the overcomers themselves. They, they, they were actually in that system and it didn't work. And then they come here and they, and they, and it does work. So so I think that there's, um, you know, and, and you guys probably know this, but there's a $1 trillion a year in 
welfare related services for the country with 19 different silos, right? And so all these silos, all these departments all focus on one part of the human condition. And so they, they, most of them don't even, don't even coordinate with each other. And so it's a maddening kind of thing. And that's so HUD told us to go away and then Health and Human Services, which is where Clarence is high up in, uh, he, Clarence runs welfare for the whole country. He runs an $18 billion a year department. And they're looking for something because they just keep spending more and more and more money and people keep, you know, it just keeps getting worse and worse and worse. So, um, so anyway, that, that's yes. I think the answer is uh, absolutely there's going to be a paradigm shift. And um, I just keep praying for it because there's a lot of souls out there that are stuck in this. This churn is a real thing. I mean, it is, it is a real thing. And it's a horrible thing to see when people just get stuck in it for a long time. All righty. Anyone else have questions? Sandy? Or no? Yes, I Go do. Ahead. I have a comment, Chris. Ex excellent program. Um, even when I was in nursing school in the 60s, one of our programs, we had to go through public health. I was going to the ghetto area of San Francisco and the total turnover of generations in the homes that I was seeing was so frustrating because there was, they didn't see any way out. And this is just absolutely fantastic. Thanks you so much for your 30 years of work. Absolutely. I, um, I, uh, I really get excited when I hear people like you, Sandy, really recognize the, the value of it. And um, absolutely, you know, there's, uh, um, I don't know if you can, can you still see the screen there? Can you see this? Um, yes. Can I just put up there? Yes. Yeah. So this is signed by a bunch of elected officials. So that's Clarence's signature right there. Can you see all the signatures? Wow. And then this is this is all of them signing on to this initiative right now. So, you know, um, we are we're gonna we're getting more signatures. This was the initial tranche of them. Um, and then this one here was signed by 21 of our overcomers, and uh, that just happened a few weeks ago. And so they are. Um, this version here doesn't have all their signatures on it, but they all signed it. Uh, and so it's, it's really exciting because the overcomers themselves are going to lead this. And, and there's something really powerful and simple in that, but there's a lot of support. So I just want to you know, leave off with saying that um, I'm, on a, I'm on a leadership acquisition mission and some of the best, most powerful leaders if you will, powerful in a, in a real way, humble way, um, are Rotarians. So, um, you know, um, I want you to know that I'm, that I'm on the hunt for, for folks like you to join in this with us, because that's how we, that's the only way for us to be able to do it is through the people. This is ground up, community-based. It, it's, it's us together, people that care about people, um, and the government, you know, it's not like we're poo-pooing all over. I would love the government to like figure this out and start helping, you know, but uh, you know, it's not, it's not working that way right now. So it's gotta be what we're doing and it's ground up. So, um, and I do believe, you know, there is a place for sure with the government is a huge part of, of our community. It's what we, you know, we, it's gotta be a public private partnership, but right now it, it we're just, we're doing this. We're we are doing it. Ground up, community based, market driven. Um, so I hope that um, go to our website, solutionsforchange.org. We just redid it. It's got one of those really cool drone things, you know, where you're showing our the our campuses. Um, so and th there's so much to learn on there. Sign up to our newsletter. There's a place on there that's you know you can get involved please, please do that. There's a place where you can sign the proclamation yourself. 
Um, please consider that. And uh, thank you so much for allowing me to be here with y'all today. Um, I, I love I love being around Rotarians and it's hard when you got to do it through a screen. Um, but man, I got a really cool song today by Vaughn. So I'm, I'm stoked. So, so <laughs> I have one, one more question for you, Chris, before you go. Um, yep. Dan Sherlock had asked, what will your organization look like with the housing as a separate entity? Great question. We had to sever all the, so um, we had to sever it all from our mission. So now, you know, the government has forced us to run it as a business transaction. We fought for two years and spent a ton of money that we didn't really want to spend. And the, at the end, the lawyer said, you can keep fighting this, but you'll need about another 1.5 million to fight, you know, the 800 million pound gorilla. And we just like, look, it's COVID, man. I'm just happy to still be around. And, you know, by the way, we didn't lay off anybody. I can't lay people off because we need everybody that we can get to help to serve our people. So, but I think the way it looks is this, and it's spelled out in the new initiative here, is that we're now going to start, we, we're social entrepreneurs, and we are like, in, we are, you can't stop us. We, we're not going to be stopped. We can't because there's our people, and then there's our mission, and really bad things got in the middle of that. And I, I don't like that. I don't, if you, if you get between our mission and our families, it's usually not going to be a good day for you. And <laughs> I don't, I don't mean that like in a real threatening way. I just, but they finally were able to get in the middle. We had to sever, we spent 12 years building this beautiful housing. And so we're going to fight. We're going to, there's some things that we're going to do to try to fight for it and get it back. We're, talking to some folks at a very high level right now. Um, but the other thing we're gonna do is we're gonna spin up a new non, a new uh, social enterprise that's gonna build AD. I know it sounds crazy, but we're gonna build our own housing. Uh, we have people, we have all kinds of tradesmen um, in our networks and our, uh, our alumni. And we're gonna, we're gonna spin up a new, non, a new social enterprise and what we're looking at right now is ADUs. You know, they're passing all these accessory, accessory dwelling unit uh, laws. And um, uh, I'll tell you more about it when we get closer to it. But I'm really excited because it's an opportunity where we can, again, from the market um, and from ground up, we could do this. So um, that's a good question. Thank you for asking. Beautiful. Thank you again, Chris. It was a brilliant program and and thank you for what you're doing it's good work and and uh i'm sure there's at least one or two of our very active rotarians who heard your calls to uh, action and and you'll probably be hearing from them and so, so. yeah so i'm going to end today's program first off by asking if anybody has not voted please go out you have till 8 p.m tonight you just got to be in line at 8 p.m um please vote voting is good and instead of shower thoughts, today I'm doing thoughts of a dog. Hmm. The human says there are two options, inside or outside. But if they would simply elevate their mindset, they would uncover a third option. Stand in the doorway and sniff the air. Hmm. Have a great week. We'll see you next week. Vote, 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 vote. Bye. Thank you. Vaughn, before you sign off, I have yes, chats for you. I responded to your uh, questions. Oh, good. So that's there before oh, we sign okay. off. We need, we need to get a website again from Chris uh, so that we can make sure we log on. The, uh, Solutionsforchange.org, he said. Yes, here, hang on. Solutionsforchange.org. Here we go. Great, thank you. Uh, hang, I, I'm gonna post this up here, share screen. Uh, where are we? There we are. I got Vaughn's email too, so I'll send, I, I'll, uh, I'll send you Vaughn the um, uh, other, you know, contact info and all that. I would love to, I would love to connect with you folks. Um, so please reach back out and uh, 
I used to say, hey, we'll give you the 25 cent tour instead of the nickel tour, but now all I got is Zoom, you know, so. Yeah. Um, <laughs> all right. Well, feel free to talk amongst yourselves if you would like. I'm going to leave this open for about another 10 minutes and unless everyone disappears on me. And uh, thank you again very much, Chris. We will talk to you very soon. Thank you, Andrew. My thank pleasure. Uh, if you really, uh, by the way, if you want to wash more dishes, feel free. <laughs> Swing on by. Maybe just one, one more question. Have you looked uh, to some of these legal organizations that are willing to uh, invest their attorneys into those efforts. Um, FaithWorks, there, there's a there's a bunch of them out there that are are anxious to uh, kind of help with these government issues. Yeah, Vaughn, we you know we did we got some help from from them over this last eighteen months or so that we've been battling and wrangling with this. Um, but we, you know, if you know of any, I'm emailing you right now. Uh, um, you, you may know of some that maybe perhaps we didn't check then that we would definitely, you know, want to look into that. Um, I'd be glad to it's, help it's, 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 it's a big, it's a huge amount because they said 1.5 million just to start, but taking on a government like that could be, they said five or 6 million bucks. And, you know, um, that reality pill when we swallowed it is when we just said, we, you know, we just can't keep, we just can't keep fighting Rome like this. Well, you know, um, so, but they're, you know, we're, we're, we are looking into stuff like that. So if, if you know of any options or resources, please let me know. That'd be great. Yeah. I'll get back to you. Thank you. I'm sending my email right now. We, we hope everybody's going to come and uh, participate in our big activity on the 15th. Plan on uh, buying Christmas presents for your friends and family. Yes. Sandy has got an incredible array of very, very wonderful gifts. Here. Go holidays. Hug. <laughs> All right. See you, everybody. See you. Thank Bye. You. Thank, you. Thank you again, Chris. Have a great day. Thank you, you too. Bye, everyone. Bye. Good job, Andy. Take care.